It's not normal, you know, what we do. There's just no room for everybody. So if you don't give it all up to do this, you won't survive. What does it take to become a top level musician? How much practicing? What types of sacrifices need to be made? And what are the two most important qualities that the best musicians have that help maximize their potential and propel them to the top? A lot of people misunderstand what's involved in being a professional musician. In this video, we're going to talk with some of the best classical musicians in the field to find out what their lives really look like. The reality is that professional musicians have some of the most peculiar lifestyles that are repetitive, demanding, and unpredictable. What I want to help share to the world are the details buried in their daily routines that help set the best apart from the rest. By partnering with Hamburg's world-famous Elb Philharmonie Concert Hall, I got to spend a day with one of the resident NDR Elb Philharmonie Orchestra's violinists backstage at the hall itself. So I'll get to show you all of the details behind getting and maintaining a job at one of the most prestigious orchestras. You have to have this focus, you know, and really being harsh on yourself of like, what do I need to fix? Like, what do I need to work on to be the best? I also interviewed an exceptional pianist friend of mine about how she keeps up with the demands of a heavy performance schedule combined with a full-time teaching position. You do have to go in with the mentality of if I'm not the best musician that I can be, what's the point? Many people think that all a musician needs to do is practice a ton and have talent. This is true, but it's only the tip of the iceberg. Maddie Vinecor is one of the violinists in the NDR El Philharmonie Orchestra. This is the resident orchestra at the El Philharmonie in Hamburg. To get a job at an orchestra like this one, musicians train for years on end, then must win at the auditions. I went into every audition I've ever done with the goal to win. You know, not for the experience, just I, I wanted to win that job. But I also think it's just as important to be realistic with yourself. There are so many factors with auditions in professional orchestras that are completely out of your control. My dream if you told like little Maddie like 15 years ago that she was gonna be in a professional orchestra doing it full time, you know, yeah. she would have been very happy, so. Can you break down where your focus is? You gotta be focused at all times on the conductor because he's kind of controlling most of it. But also my section leader here. It depends on where we are in the music. Sometimes we have our cues written in here. Here's where the flute comes in, so that's where I'm about to come in now. And sometimes we have the rhythm and we have to focus on ourselves to be as stable as possible, but also in tune with whoever is following us. When I started my job here, it was kind of like throwing a baby in water and kind of a sink or swim situation, mostly just with the language. So in Maddie's case, being in Hamburg means that she's living far away from most of her family and friends who are in the United States. As an orchestral musician, you can't always choose where you live. And that's something that you should be aware of if you want to go down this path. And the freelance musician is bound to a lifestyle of frequent travel that is really rough on the body. This is my friend Tanya Gabrielian, one of the best and busiest pianists I know. Though her training in many ways was not too different from that of an orchestral musician, her lifestyle is very different. She was just appointed head of keyboard at the Royal Irish Academy of Music, which means she has to move to a new country while keeping up with her busy freelance concert schedule. So what's your upcoming schedule like? I fly to Minnesota for a concerto, two days. I fly to San Francisco to open the San Francisco International Piano Festival, two days. Fly to DC to pick up a suitcase, fly to Ireland to dump off a suitcase to take a flight the next morning to Hamburg for a festival there, and then straight to Leipzig and Kolditz, like three consecutive days for concerts. Go to Ireland, try to find a place to live in like three days before I go to Scotland for another concert, and then school starts the next day. <laughs> Your immune system dealing with stress constantly all the time, it's toxic to our bodies. Now, what about practicing? You could practice 10,000 hours with your brain somewhere else, and it doesn't mean anything. You should be able to get what you want to get done in like four hours a day if you're getting ready for an audition or a competition. I mean, of course, there are times where 
if you're in a time crunch, you might have to push that up to six or eight hours a day. These numbers are in fact very common. And not only that, most classical musicians start training at a very early age, usually around the ages three to six. I started piano when I was three. I started violin when I was four. I did my first piano competition when I was four. For piano, you're stuck from a young age in a room by yourself. You have once weekly lessons. I don't know anyone at the age of four who wants to practice seven hours a day, but you're sort of put on this path of, you know, succeed, succeed, succeed. You know, you have to build these muscles from a young age and they have to develop. For some people, it requires a certain kind of schooling. I had a lot of friends who were homeschooled. I went to public school. I'm very thankful for that. I learned a lot there, but it was very, very hard to balance you know, a public school in New York education and also try to go for this career as a violinist. Once I graduated from high school, I knew what I wanted to do and I love playing violin and I was ready by the time I was 18 and going to college, I was ready to be like, okay, time to focus on this, time to like really dive into the craft and the art of being a violinist. This type of training also prepares musicians like Maddie to handle the workload involved during an average concert season. We have a full week of playing, of rehearsing, and then two or three concerts in the weekend, a day off, maybe two days off, and then the next program starts. And if it's a hard program like a new music, you have to start practicing for the next program while you're also practicing the current program. While I was backstage at the Elf Philharmonie, I was also able to interview a top-level soprano who is there getting ready to perform that evening. My name is Barbara Burke and I'm a singer, a soprano in Berlin Radio Choir. Now vocalists are notorious for having really strict routines, so I made sure I asked her what her daily schedule was like. I had breakfast and afterwards I did some uh, little yoga, then I did my technical warm-up and then I practiced a little bit and afterwards I went to the rehearsal here. Now I will have some dinner with friends, afterwards I will relax a little bit and around about 6 o'clock in the evening I will prepare for the concert, I will put on my dress, I will uh, put on some makeup and sing a little bit more and um, be here in time for the performance tonight. Are you stressed out by any of these elements? The most difficult thing for me is to get enough sleep. If I have a concert in the night, I'm not home until 11, so I have to be very careful about that. And also to live a um, healthy life. That means to have good food and to drink enough, not to drink alcohol, not to smell. That's for me very important. Do you deal with nerves at all? Yes, of course. <laughs> It's easier when you do lots of concerts. The first concert in a season is always very interesting because you're more nervous than um, in the coming concerts. Now let's get into the two qualities that I think all top musicians have. The first one is the commitment to be the best. I'm choosing this one because it encompasses so many things involved in pursuing excellence as a musician. So it really involves having the drive to continuously get better and better, being observant so that you know what types of skills you need to work on and acquire. Also having this commitment enables you to get beyond different setbacks and difficulties during your music career. I see this a lot in students where they don't have that drive to push themselves a little more. And if you don't have that drive, it's not gonna happen. Like it's just, it just won't. Also that ability to endure discomfort and persevere through adversity. Now this brings me to the second quality, which is adaptability. And I'm choosing this one over so many other qualities that can easily be considered super important for a musician to have because so many things are unpredictable in a musician's life. By being flexible to all kinds of changes, both in the short term and the long term, I think a musician becomes well equipped to figure out solutions to complex problems, everything from learning how to acquire a new technique, moving to a different city for your job, and most importantly, learning how to cope with all kinds of mental stress and setbacks involved in being a musician. I had a lot of success, but then the times that it didn't work out, I was destroyed. I was crushed. I couldn't play. I couldn't bring my, I couldn't get out of bed. And so it took me a while to figure out that as important as it is to have this drive and this 
a hardworking mentality, it is also important to just get back up on your feet when it doesn't work out. Now, you may have noticed that none of these two qualities are inherently music based. And that's because I think that having the music skills and talent is just a given, it's an entry point. And from there, there is so much hard work involved and so many things that you really just need to sacrifice and put up with in a way to make music your career. So it's really not for everyone. And just because you have so much love for music or talent, I don't think it means that it will propel you to the top. So now it's your turn to let me know in the comments what do you think of these points? What has your experience been like as a musician? And as always, thank you so much for watching and subscribing. Thank you so much to Elphilomony for making this video possible. And thank you also to my patrons on Patreon for your continued support.